Good afternoon, everybody. We'll call our meeting to order. Thank you for everyone being here. Haven't been outside for a while. Is it still raining? For those of you who just came in? Well, you know, it is the time of year to get the rain. I'm just glad we don't have the accompanying storm to rain. So. And, you know, for those of you who do not know this, Missouri Southern can have wind at times. Does anybody realize that? I think I've told this story before. I'm going to tell it again. It's a favorite one of mine. Many years ago, um, when I was going to school here, many years ago, um, I was walking from the mansion, going by Billings Lake. Wind was blowing. It was raining. And I looked up. True story. There was an umbrella that cleared Billings Lake and was climbing. <laughs> so that's how the wind came blow, for sure. So. First order of business will be consideration of the minutes of March 16th. They were in your board packet. Uh, does anyone have any changes to those minutes? Hearing none, Chair would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Governor Flanagan, is there a second? Second. Governor Kershaway, any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, same sign. The minutes are approved. Next order of business will be the report of our treasurer, uh, Ms. Linda Ice. Thank you and good afternoon. We'll look at the financial statements for the period ending March 31st of 2018. We'll look at the cash draft that reflects a balance of $17.2 million. This is an increase of a little over $2 million from the previous year. Uh, as, as noted on here, I, I do kind of expect this to level out next month. Uh, last year we had some construction projects and we were reimbursed with most of the money in April for that. So I think that will level out when we get to the end of April. The next statement we look at is the statement of net position. We have total assets of 172 million. We have total liabilities of 95 million. And this gives us a net position of 77 million. The next statement is the comparative statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in net position. We always look at the difference column between the two years. We show an increase of $397,000 in operating revenues. Operating expenses show about $1.5 million increase. A big piece of that, as we talked about last month, is obviously the scholarship piece, and that revenue flows through other sections of the financial statement. Total non-operating revenues has the decrease of 1.1 million, and as we've talked about a couple of times, it shows the decrease in appropriations in there. I also wanted to note on here the investment income line. A big piece of that is actually uh, interest from our checking accounts. As you know, we switched over our checking accounts last fall, and we they gave us a very, very favorable interest rate to do that. And so a little over $100,000 of that is additional interest. Now we do have a little bit higher uh, amounts in our, our cash, but the interest rate has made a big impact. And in addition, their fees are a little less too. So all of that combined is, is making an impact on that line. The income before the revenues for the current year is at about $6.5 million. Income in the prior year was at 8.9. And this shows a decrease of $2.2 million between the two years. Uh, we continue to get capital appropriations for the Nixon Reynolds Hall program. Uh, I have submitted, I submitted a draw request for about $700,000, and that's currently being processed, and we should receive that in the next week or so. That concludes my report. Do you have any questions for me? Sure. Linda, I'm on the uh, statement of revenue for actuals, and I'm looking at year to date on health insurance. Yes. And as I recall, last time we met, that was more like a million dollars over. Correct. Here on a year to date basis, so. Correct. The difference that's happened between the two months from the last time I presented to this month, we received a pharmacy rebate for the calendar year of 2017 of a little over 200. So that really helps with the expenses, obviously. 
uh, in the calendar year as we move forward. And, and as I mentioned, as we continue to move forward, we should get a little closer to apples. Thank you. And that rebate then just stays there for whatever is called the backup plan or the, the self-insured. The form. rebate money is moved into the insurance account. To yes, yes. Uh, yes, good. But it, it was a nice rebate to yes. receive. Absolutely. Linda, did we know we were going to get that? I believe we were going to get the pharmacy rebate, but I, since this is our first year, I don't know that we knew the magnitude of the amount. Uh, so it'd be curious to see where we end up at the end of 2018. Can any of it be credited to the health initiatives among the employees? Or is that like too much positive <laughs> thing? <laughs> well, I know that there's, uh, you know, the, the wellness incentive program yeah. that they uh -huh. have, they have a lot of initiatives for employees, and I know right now they have an incentive going on. Uh, if you uh, meet certain, certain criteria, you will get a discount on your insurance for the oh, next so. year. Uh, and I know that there are, I think, a couple hundred employees that are participating in that. And so that would be a great benefit for them next year. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Dr. Could I ask a sort of question? Under yes. non-operating revenues, yes. the uh, ARRA federal funds, we don't expect that to be ever to see that again. Do we? That's the old um, Great Recession recovery monies. Right, so is that line going to disappear at some point? I'm, I'm sorry, which line are we oh, looking at? Oh, under non-operating revenues? Yes. And expenses done? The ARRA, Federal Stabilization Funds, that, that came from years ago, so it's got zero, you know, just... Correct. So, it's, so that line could go away at some point. That went, line could go away. You are correct. We're, we're not, that won't happen again. Correct. I mean, maybe if it does, we'll put it in line. Yeah. We have another great recession. It's not having a great recession. Any other questions for Linda? If there's no other questions, uh, we would entertain a motion to approve the treasurer's report. So move, Governor Franks. Is there a second? Second. Governor Haley. Any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. The report is approved. Uh, next is the Vice President of Business Affairs, Rob Houston. Thank you. Floor over construction report. With you, as Linda mentioned, the Nixon Hall project is continuing on. We have completed the drilling and pouring of the building pad piers. Completed those yesterday. There's 46 of them, and now they're starting on the piers to shore up the bridge between Reynolds Hall and Nixon Hall. And they have a couple of those completed. They have a couple more to go, and probably by the end of this week, they'll have them all done. Actually, they finished yesterday. Actually, they finished yesterday. <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, you know, and I, I mentioned to Bob earlier, a couple days ago, that right now it doesn't look like a lot of things going on over there. You've got these building here, but we're waiting to see the darn thing rise up from the ground. That'll happen probably around the 1st of June. We'll have a lot of the steel being delivered over May, and then they'll start wrecking the facility, and you, then you'll really see it uh, rise from the bottom. That project is scheduled to be complete by the end of this next fall, so we'll have classes in there a year from now. Uh, stadium renovation, we have met with the architects numerous times, and they are right now fine-tuning the uh, design of the facility and creating some fundraising do documents that Dr. Hodson can take out and, and Mr. Grime can take out and fundraise the dollars for that facility. And uh, we will put the residence hall project on hold for a while just to see where things pan out with enrollment. And as far as the budget goes, we have worked on various scenarios with the budget, pending the decisions with the tuition later on in the agenda. Does anybody have any questions for me? Any questions for Rob? For Rob, you didn't mention the trail project. I'm sorry? You didn't mention the trail project. No, we did not, so I was thinking. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, well, Rob was talking about the uh, Nixon Hall project. I, I think uh, we need to keep in mind how we got Nixon Hall. And uh, uh, last Friday at uh, the Eggs and Issues uh, session up at uh, Joplin, uh, our, our Speaker of the Senate was in a particularly 
talk at his move and didn't talk about that project. So I think it behooves us to make sure because he will not be on board when we cut the ribbon and go in the hall, how we got it, and make sure he is, he is well represented for us. Thank you for your report. Next is the report of the athletic director, and Jared's not with us today, so Justin Maskus is here. And so, Justin, welcome. Thank you. Uh, first off, we want to uh, let everyone know Jared is up in Kansas City with uh, two parts today. He's up with our golf team there in the, our conference tournament today, and then he's also going to be participating in a conference meeting later on in the day. Um, wanted to start off first. We've got the sport reports there listed for you, but um, the big thing we want to, uh, things we want to talk about first off, the athletic department had a total of six either current or former student athletes earn the Glenn Dolan's award earlier this uh, this month. Uh, we had uh, five from track and field, and then uh, uh, one from volleyball as well, uh, also a basketball track and field uh, slash uh, athlete. Uh, former track and field and cross country all American Kimmy Reed, uh, she was known as Kimmy Shank when she was here. Participated in the Boston Marathon last uh, week and finished eighth overall in that race. And so she was she was one of uh, eight women from the United States that uh, were in the top ten in that race. And so that was a big thing that they were very proud of up there. Also, the MIAA Hall of Fame will be um, taking place that uh, will take place on June fourth at the Plaza uh, Library downtown. Richard Jordan, a former uh, uh, player for uh, the Lions, he's also in our Hall of Fame be scheduled to be inducted. Uh, following the induction, they'll be doing a social at a nearby location to celebrate with uh, local alums as well. And finally, I uh, wanted to talk about our Student Athlete Advisory Committee here recently. Uh, this this week, uh, participated in Earth Day uh, ceremonies and they went around campus, helped clean up campus a little bit and also <coughs> hit the, uh, the roads of Newman and Duquesne around town here and did that as one of their many service activities that they do throughout the year. Very good. Are there any questions? Any questions for Justin? Justin, thank you for your report. Appreciate it. Next is the report of our Executive Vice President, Dr. Hudson. Good afternoon. You have a copy of my report in your packet. I'll highlight a few items. Uh, Missouri Southern was the recipient of a gift in kind of three 3D printers uh, to benefit the engineering technology and the art departments. Nemotech of Joplin, Missouri uh, was the, uh, were the donors of, of those uh, printers, and so we're very grateful. And, and if you don't know what a 3D printer is capable of, I will pass around the little plastic lion that uh, they were playing around and demonstrating what a 3D printer can do. I, I just think that's amazing. Uh, you'll see under the admissions category that we did host Sophomore Day uh, again on April 3rd. It's the fourth year in a row we've hosted that event. We had 1,200 10th graders. Uh, from area high schools on campus. Uh, they participated in 27 different presentations from different academic programs. You have a picture there of Tim Wilson in criminal justice uh, showing them uh, something, uh, but they all look very engaged and interested in whatever Tim's doing, and I'm sure it was uh, since it was criminal justice. Uh, but that is down a little bit uh, from where we've been in the past because the state of Missouri no longer mandates a statewide testing day uh, for juniors. And so these were high schools that voluntarily agreed to send their students to Southern. <clears throat> On the back, you'll see that in an effort to close the gap between those who are admitted and those who eventually enroll uh, for the fall, we sent out 1,800 tassel toppers to high school seniors who can decorate the top of their uh, mortarboard at graduation. That's a way to, again, encourage them to think about Missouri Southern. They have applied. They've been admitted but we need them to enroll. And so we, we sent out 1,800 of those to students all over the region uh, in time for high school graduation. And then finally, at the bottom of the back page, you'll see the finalists for the 2018 Annie Baxter Award. Uh, that award will be giving, given out this coming Wednesday, May 2nd. Uh, there are four great finalists, and so if you are able to join us for the luncheon on Wednesday, May 2nd, we would love to have you to attend. You should have received an invitation. But uh, if you'd like to just tell me if you're able to, to uh, join us or um, call Chelsea Connolly in the development office, we'd love to have you there. Any reports from Dr. Hudson? Brad, I just have to add the tassel toppers. That's, that's a great idea, getting the word out. And this 3D printer, um, that's amazing to me. I mean, I, I get in a candy store, I guess. Yeah. I, 
I think Bill thought the same thing. We had modeling play, you remember, when we went to some of the study. You've come a long way. Thank you for your report. Yeah. Next is a report of the Provost and the VP for Academic Affairs, Dr. Carson. Thank you so much. I, I have an unusually brief um, primary report today, only in the name of extra, extra numerous academic policies a little bit later on. So, um, today I just really wanted to share with you a couple of other things going on campus. We mentioned them briefly at launch, but um, welcome you to them and, and we really hope that you do come. One tonight at 7 p.m. in Corley Auditorium is our 42nd Annual Academic um, Achievement Recognition Ceremony. It is where we recognize the outstanding graduate from each department, a few special awards, and then our overall outstanding graduate for the university. And um, it's a, a very nice event, really well represented by not only academic affairs, but student affairs too. Darren will be there to, to give out a large award. So we'd love to have you there. Um, before you depart here today, though, if you can't stay for that, running until four in the ballroom is our student research symposium. It is put together by Dr. Howarth, who is with the honors program. I, I tell you a little bit about the honors program and the narrative there at the top. We are continuing to strengthen and develop and benchmark the honors program for success. We still continue to have uh, increasing growth in numbers of our capacity and have been for the last three years in our honors program. Um, so we're continuing to grow there, but we're looking at some pretty significant changes that I'll be bringing to you guys for your deliberation in the fall with regard to continuing to evolve and advance the curriculum of the program. Specifically, we are looking at evolving the traditional research paradigm into an e-portfolio that I think will serve our students really well. But in the meantime, we have our traditional student research fair. It is open to all disciplines of um, undergraduate and graduate students as well, and we will give out the awards at 3.30 today. But in the meantime, the students will be there to share with you their, um, their projects if you have a chance to stop by. And then the, the final thing I have in my primary report is I also wanted to share with you all that we talked about research a great deal lately um, and our students not just present their research here but travel all over and here's an actual photograph that was taken within the last month when our students traveled to KCU Joplin to participate in their research fair and their research day and we're really excited that their projects were considered um, sufficiently co competitive and advanced enough to be presented at the medical school. Again, I've talked before about the tortuosity, the bottom project there. It's it's really groundbreaking research, not for anybody. It's, it's just really advancing the science and understanding of the condition of tortuosity. So we are very proud of, of them. And um, that is all I wanted to share with you until we get to academic policies. Very good. Any questions for Dr. Carson? Hearing none, we move to our VP of University and Affairs, uh, Mr. Fullerton. And you have uh, the report in front of you, but I'll just highlight a few things. Uh, you've already heard mentioned of the, uh, the uh, annual Glenn Dolan's Leadership Awards, and uh, Forrest Bunter, a senior music major from the Osho, uh, was selected a, as Leader of the Year uh, at that ceremony. Uh, we had a total of 35 Missouri Southern students that were recognized uh, for their leadership uh, service to the campus community and fellow students and then out of that group of 35 uh, Mr. Bunter was selected as the student leader of the year. Um, Stephanie Hopkins uh, just want to point out she directs our student success center our learning center that does tutoring supplemental instruction uh, uh, disability services uh, she was actually granted uh, level four certification through the National College Learning Center Association Level four is a lifetime achievement certification uh, for uh, learning professionals, uh, academic specialists uh, for their years of service, dedication, and that's a lengthy criteria. Um, and that is the only lifetime uh, certificate that that agency offers. And so we're very proud of her. On the back, you'll see also Phi Eta Sigma. We inducted 68 students into Phi Eta Sigma. Um, a few weeks ago. To qualify, they have to be a first-year student at Missouri Southern and have a, a maintained a 3.5 grad uh, GPA. Um, this is the largest class that we have inducted to date. Normally there are about 20 or 25 students, but this one was 68 students. That was a phenomenal uh, event. 
And I can't believe Dr. Carson didn't mention the Core 42 presentations that, that, that are coming up. Uh, but, but thank you to uh, Dr. Archer, uh, uh, Brenda Beasley, the uh, Cheryl Dobson, the Registrar's Office, Faustina Abrams. Um, that has been a, a, a definite labor for faculty and, and staff across campus. And uh, I think in, in following the listserv through the Registrar's Office across the state, Missouri Southern has not had any of the issues that the other schools, there is a lot of, I don't want to say infighting, but healthy discussion at some of the other campuses about how to roll out that initiative. And we have been very fortunate that went smoothly here at Missouri Southern. And lastly, I just point to the, the front page in the uh, update on uh, our young man that was injured at the ball game. Uh, Alicia Hughes, who was the staff center president, many of you remember from a few years back. She's our bursar, uh, probably uh, one of the most positive people on this campus, just an outstanding person. Her seven-year-old son was hit a week ago Friday uh, down at Joe Becker. Um, they have moved him out of intensive care. He was able to speak yesterday, um, having a few uh, tremors, seizures, so they're still, he's not out of the woods yet, so they, they encourage you to uh, keep them in your prayers. But we also wanted to put, we had a lot of questions about the GoFundMe account that the family has established. And that's at the bottom of the page there. So with that, I will conclude my report and answer any questions. Are there any questions for Darren? Darren, thank you for bringing that up. Um, and please let Alicia know that uh, thoughts and prayers this university are with her and her family. I did when, when we got notice of that. I mean, there's not a one of us that, that wasn't moved by that. So, so please pass that along to her. Absolutely. Thank you. Next up is our Faculty Senate President, Dr. Nicoletti. Thank you. Um, so here's my written report. <clears throat> I do want to highlight um, several items from our April meeting. It was one of the most important meetings of the year uh, where we went through all of our faculty handbook changes that we passed and a few other things. So first, uh, you'll see that in the handbook, every three years, the handbook initiates uh, a salary review. And so as Faculty Senate President and the Faculty Senate Executive Committee, we have initiated that review uh, last month, and that will continue into next year. Um, <clears throat> Academic Affairs will provide the data to both uh, the Executive Committee and Faculty Welfare, and they will conduct an analysis. Um, <clears throat> and of course, we're fully aware that uh, whatever the results are, you know, budget concerns are priority, and that, that, that language is in the handbook. So this is normal, this is routine, this is a handbook initiation. Um, the last one was done in 2015, which is why we're initiating it now, three years, uh, every three years. Uh, we also reviewed four important ha faculty handbook changes um, that you will eventually see for approval. Um, the first one that we've already discussed in previous meetings was a reduction in the office hours uh, from 10 to 6 um, with the possibility of digital and virtual office hours. And so that passed with over overwhelming support, brings us in line with uh, many of the other, most of the other uh, Missouri institutions. And so we will be commensurate with that. Um, the other uh, thing that we did that was, that was very big was we approved language to combine the tenure and promotion committees into a single entity. And that's very important um, as we move forward in the, in the process and also as we hire new people who will be combining both tenure and promotion as they go through the system. Um, next year, in conjunction with this, uh, Faculty Senate will also be working with tenure and promotion to clarify the standards uh, for both team. <coughs> Um, third, we clarified and corrected the language in the Faculty Handbook Committee to allow uh, members who are designated as staff but teaching as adjunct faculty to be able to use the faculty grievance procedures for grievances dealing um, with their teaching side. And so there was a problem where adjuncts were classified as staff, they couldn't access the grievance procedure, um, and so we just corrected that. It was a, a very simple correction. Um, and lastly, we've been working on the last one for two years. Um, we've created a faculty IT advisory committee to be added to the bylaws of the Faculty Senate. It's an additional faculty committee. Um, it needed a two-thirds majority vote with a quorum, which we passed yesterday evening at 4 o'clock. We had over an 84% approval. We only needed you know, a little over 66%. Um, what this committee does is it bridges communication gaps between the faculty and the administration um, in IT and the CIO. And it sort of brings the technology issues uh, to the forefront and helps us um, solve those. And so we've been working um, as an ad hoc committee for two years. Uh, and so we finally institutionalized this one. And we're very excited about that. Um, 
Lastly, uh, we looked over the core 42 um, at this meeting, and we overwhelmingly <laughs> unanimously passed all of the Missouri Southern specific changes, including lifetime wellness, the, uh, the international mission, and the kinesiology um, setup. And so that passed overwhelming, and then you see there's some curricular changes. So feel free to ask any questions that is my report. Any questions for Dr. Nicolet? Thank you. Like to comment on the course 42. Excellent move, by the fact. It's not happening everywhere. Um, and they deserve a tip of the cap. So please pass them on. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the report of the Staff Senate President. And with us today is Angela Bennett. Going back to the picture with Tim Wilson, just to say something that is about the alternative light source, forensic life, light source. So that's what he was teaching the students. <laughs> Found that out. I was wondering what the same thing, about the same thing. Um, as for the staff senate, um, we have an elections committee. The elections <coughs> committee announced the winners of the first quarter service champ award. The Southern Service Champ Award is a quarterly award given to three outstanding staffs. Um, the award winners are selected based on nominations from the campus community. To meet the criteria for nomination, the nominee must meet the attributes of the five paths of the Lion Paw, respect to campus community, positive attitude, pride in work, exemplary dependability, and excellence in customer service. The winners for the first quarter were Jan Gardner for Payroll Manager, Christina Hamilton, the Administrative Assistant for Academic Affairs, and Amber Higgins, the Systems Coordinator for Financial Aid. In May, we'll also have nominations and elections for six staff Senate positions whose terms have expired. And then also we, the staff Senate are members of actively participating um, communities and university committees. So. That's it. All right. Any questions for Angela? Excellent criteria for a nomination, that's for sure. That's right. That's right. Thank you for your <coughs> Next is the report of our student Senate president, Joe Black. I'd just like to report a couple things on behalf of the Senate. Um, we also had some people with the condolence awards, uh, three senators, uh, Darren Prater, Darren Bentley, Carmen Rudrop, so that's pretty cool to get to uh, see them receive that award. Also, we kind of ended the year on, well, tonight's my last meeting, but it's committee, but at our last body meeting this previous week, um, we kind of ended the year on a really strong note. I felt like we approved a bill uh, for $26,000 to lead to a full furniture renovation in the student lounge in Billingsley Hall, which really kind of completes like my three-tier plan for Billingsley, which was get a bigger trophy case to recognize the clubs on campus, which is getting installed over there in the CAF. Then we did the banners on campus to bring recognition to campus for all the clubs, which will get installed this summer. And then to finalize having the furniture renovated over there to give a better spot to study and hang out for the students. So um, that was pretty cool. And then just kind of funny. I see out the window there people campaigning to replace me, so that was kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's another way. So uh, anyway, so that's where I'm at. But it's been a really fun year. So very good. Any questions for Joe? Can I make a comment? They also helped with um, some painting and some renovation over in the Criminal Justice Center. We actually have some color in our building, and it's really actually impacted the students. They really appreciate it, so I wanted to say thank you. That's great. Joe, thank you for your <clears throat> Next up is uh, board committees, and we had a busy morning. Uh, we first <coughs> met as a group in a planning session as part of our strategic planning and, and did some uh, forward-looking exercises looking at uh, our strategic plan to come so it's still a work in progress we'll be meeting on it again soon and then we transitioned into our audit and budget committee uh, where we took up several important things and i'll let governor gibson talk about those thank you mr chairman um, we do have a recommendation for the board with respect to tuition uh, in a uh, but before that dr marble made a presentation to the Budget and Audit Committee uh, regarding the tuition proposals. It's 
going to keep that same presentation to the full board. kind of a review for many of you, but I think it's important for us to kind of walk through it in, in um, pieces. Um, funding for Missouri Southern is uh, fundamentally comes from two places, um, state appropriations and <coughs> maybe we didn't pay a um, <laughs> state appropriations and tuition. We do receive um, help from the foundation. Thank you, Brad and Kevin and everyone in the area. Um, typically, that those donations, they'll go to scholarships, and scholarships really help students pay the tuition. Um, also, we do have some uh, endowed professorships, and there are some uh, equipment purchases that come from the, the foundation. But by and large, the two major sources of funding for our university are uh, state appropriations and tuition. It's just the uh, fact of the matter. So what's happened to um, appropriations uh, over the last few years? The Joplin Globe ran a, a very nice story, I think it was last Sunday, um, that kind of explained everything. Uh, the, some of the data we use here may be a little different because some of that came from 2001 to today. We're using 2010 as the anchor point. And really the, the reason we use 2010 is because that's the year that the state fully recovered from the Great Recession. And we started to see unemployment fall uh, from like 9% to I think now 3.7, 3.8, something like that. Uh, we also saw median household income start to rise and it's gone up uh, virtually every year since. And as a result, that general revenue to the state of Missouri has gone up also, about $2 billion. In fact, a little over $2 billion since 2010. Um, the ironic part, though, is that higher ed funding has gone down um, $170 million, and, or roughly. And the reasoning is that Medicaid has taken a, a bigger and bigger chunk of the budget pie every year. Uh, about 40% of the total budget goes to uh, Medicaid, I'm told. Uh, so, with that backdrop, what happened in 2000? In 2010, uh, funding from at Missouri Southern State Appropriations of 25 million dollars, uh, almost 26 million dollars. And since that time, we we've never received that much money again. Frankly, since 2018. As a result, over those eight years, we had about a 25 million dollar <coughs> loss in appropriations each year, and that's not adjusting for inflation. If you adjust the 25 million for inflation to this to 2018, it's over 29 million dollars. So the gap between 29 million and 22 million is very substantial. Uh, so how have we dealt with that? Well, with restriction, we've tried to cut expenses and find other ways to raise revenue. This has been very, very significant. Um, even the flat line would have been better than what has happened. There's another way to look at it. It's just sort of been a straight downhill drop. Um, it's been in, you know, jogs, but that gives you a little better idea. Getting down to 22 million 340 thousand this year. Now this is a chart that was in the paper, um, and you've seen before probably. And there's the 22 million 340 thousand 305 at Missouri Southern, which of course puts us down at the bottom. Um, so the first column is available appropriation. Second column is enrollment measured in FTE and that's just full-time equivalent student and that's determined by uh, if the student takes 15 hours every semester 30 hours per year undergraduate students uh, graduate students are a little less than that state appropriations per FTE is just division divide that in there and see what you get and then tuition per FTE and it kind of the total then at the right bottom uh, the bottom of the arrow 10665 is over $1,000 less than the next lowest institution, which happens to be Missouri State. Uh, so if, you think, if we were just at that level, $1,000 times 4859 uh, would make a, a huge difference. But we haven't been. And so what's happened to tuition over the time? Switching gears a little bit. Well, tuition has gone up, but it's gone up very slowly. This, much 
slower pace. Uh, in fact, over this period of time, this decade, we had four times when tuition was frozen, zero. Two times when it was in the 2%, 2.3, 2.4% range. And two other times it was just in the 3% range, 3.3, 3.4. So tuition <coughs> did, did not move up incrementally, uh, but has been kind of slow to, to follow. Um, you recall too, back in October, we uh, rolled all of our common fees and required fees into tuition for simplicity and transparency for our students. Um, many colleges and universities use fees just like they were tuition. So if they're charged on every hour, a fee is really tuition. It's just a you know, rose by any other name, it's still a rose. Uh, so we thought just in full transparency. So our students at $202 have rec center, health center, activity, uh, technology, part of, all included. So we thought that was a, a really good thing to do. So now we're talking about 202, it includes all these, these uh, other benefits. So what do we have we done um, with fewer dollars? And we have a handout that the board should have, and maybe there's others to pass around that really just lists expense reductions and programs with cut, um, job eliminations, uh, positions that have been combined um, on the one hand, on the other hand, the budget stabilization is another handout that should be in everybody's board packet. Uh, that it talks about the great game and what we've done with the great game of education, how we have uh, put a phased retirement, gone to self-insurance, other things we've tried to do to stabilize the budget. Um, but it's been very, very difficult um, with low state appropriations for FTE and low tuition for FTE. So moving on to talk about appropriations, which we have very little, I mean, we can lobby, we can work, but we don't lobby, no, we, don't. we advocate, we're not lobbyists, we advocate uh, for higher appropriations, and we're trying to do that all the time, um, but tuition is really the only thing that we have full control over. So where do we rank uh, right now? So this is current, uh, 200, you can see our $202, and zero fees, 6067 And then you can see the other universities the lowest, they're higher in cost, but look at that fee column. Um, it's extraordinary. In fact, some of them are hard to imagine. Uh, you, you, cannot, you can advertise a very low tuition, but then lump on these obligations. They're required fees. These are not you know, incidental. These are required. And come up with a very large number. Um, we, we don't think that's the best way to operate. So what's our um, straightforward position? It's to increased tuition by $30 per credit hour for undergraduate in-state students. That's a 14.98% uh, increase, uh, one that we think will stabilize um, our finances, we hope, uh, unless we have further reductions. Now, where will that increase leave us? Still leaves us the best value. And um, this is next year, and none of the other institutions have changed. They're still the same from last year. I know that you know, all of them are going to go up um, either in fees, required fees, or tuition, or both. That's going to happen. So we're still going to be the best value. It's just going to cost a little more. Right. Um, so what we're recommending is uh, changes in um, undergraduate fee. You can see there a $30 increase for in-state and line pride. Undergraduate out-of-state increase is always du typically doubled, so it's just double the in-state uh, rate. Our graduates a little different, going from 314 to 350, but it, not including any distance learning fees. So the distance learning fee is going to be wiped out on that, so we'll be very competitive with our graduate uh, rates. Uh, distance learning deserves some explanation because it looks like it's a four dollar increase, and it's really not. Actually, it's a decrease because the way we've charged distance learning in the past is to charge the undergraduate fee, $232, plus $64 per credit hour in fees. That would be $296. So we moved that down to 270 because distance learning, remember back in October, we talked about they won't use the rec center, they probably won't use the health center to make that fair. So that's why it's, it's a little uh, deceiving, but. And the way we've done it before, this really is a, a better deal for this is like, um, And dual credit, we're not going to change. We, we recommend not to change at all because those are high school students uh, who don't they don't qualify for any financial aid. 
have to pay it out of their own pocket. And uh, we want to encourage as many students as possible to get a start so that they'll come on and uh, continue their, their college and university education. So what we'll use the revenue for, um, first we'll try to cover the deficit that we had this year, we had an $800,000 deficit. We're looking at a much greater deficit next year if we uh, didn't do something uh, on a magnitude of 50% or more higher than that. Um, address the backlog of deferred maintenance needs on campus. Um, the state keeps track of that. The last I heard was 38 million. Bob, you might have a better number than that. Is that about right? It's 38 million. 38 million dollars worth of deferred maintenance, and we haven't turned in this year's problem yet. Um, and we want to strengthen our key academic programs. We have great programs. Um, and accredited programs that need to remain that way in business and in uh, teacher education and uh, other areas. We need to keep, keep them as strong as they are. And then finally, to mitigate uh, that loss of 25 million over the last decade that we, we just didn't get. And most of all, to protect against uh, further reductions in the future because uh, this may be a trend that we haven't seen the end of yet. So that would conclude uh, my report. I'll answer any questions you might have, any board member or other person around the table. Chairman, on behalf of the Budget and Audit Committee, I recommend or uh, make the following motion to authorize the administration to set the following tuition rates for fiscal year 2019. In state and lion pride tuition at $232.24 per credit hour. Out of state tuition, $464.48 per credit hour graduate tuition rate at $350 per credit hour, distance learning tuition rate at $270.70 per credit hour, and finally dual credit tuition rate at $50 per credit hour. Very good. You've heard the motion from Governor Gibson. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Governor Franks, is there any discussion on this? Let me make this real personal at this point. Uh, my family has three people currently enrolled in Missouri Southern. Our daughter's enrolled in a master's program here, and we have two undergraduate students enrolled here. So our family's going to pay more tuition. Guess what? We need a great Missouri Southern. We don't need a substandard Missouri Southern. And if we want that, we're going to have to pay for it. And the reason we're going to have to pay uh, a, a significant increase at this point because of all the deferred actions from the state at this point that did not give us the funding that was promised or allow us to adjust tuition in smaller increments over time. So we are at this point because of the history that Dr. Marbles laid out. It doesn't change where we're at, it's where we're at, it, but we have to move on this and I don't take this vote lightly because I uh, it's going to hit my pocket as well as my entire family, but it's the right thing to do, and that's why I hardly second uh, the motion on the floor and the recommendation of the committee. Thank you, Governor Franks. Any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 And oppose the same sign. The motion carries. Thank you for your report, Governor Franks. Well, you've heard <laughs> from me, but uh, just a couple of things in the report here I want to point out. Uh, in the budget section, um, Senate Appropriations Chair Dan Brown has uh, included some money in uh, a bill that House Bill 3 comes over from the House and the Senate deals with it. And it's now in conference. Uh, $2 million. Whether that'll stay or not is debatable. Um, May not. If it does, it'll be on a line item, a single line that can be uh, vetoed. Uh, but if it does make it through, then we would have $2 million for it to work with. And then our job next year is to try to get that into the core budget. Um, it would be very difficult because other universities aren't seeing adjustments, but we would try. 
Um, that's that really not good for the, the budget. Uh, the Higher Learning Commission, I know uh, Dr. Carson spoke to that earlier. Um, I wasn't able to attend, but we do need to uh, review our bylaws. I know that we're going to talk about that in a, a specific to one um, one item, which is our meeting schedule. But we need this fall to go through our bylaws you know, from top to bottom. Um, the great game again, I want to highlight this. What a great job they're doing! And in fact, uh, selected to were approved this month to present at Kakubo the uh, Central Association for College and University Business Officers, which is a, a huge deal. Um, and so we need to get our agreement with the great cat with the SRC folks to finalize it. We're trying to do that uh, as quickly as possible because I think the meeting's in September. Is that correct? October. First. October. So we'll try to get that done. Um, and finally, I would like to just uh, thank the Board of Governors and the Missouri Southern family for uh, the support, the flowers, the expressions of their, uh, encouragement and passing my mother along. Gloria's there when she. She really was a wonderful person, and she's a library. Spent over two decades uh, loving um, children that love books. Uh, so, on behalf of our entire family, I'd like to thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Any questions for Alan? Hearing none, next item on the agenda is discussion of old business. Uh, the chair knows that you know, old business is coming through the body. Does anybody have anything to bring up? Hearing none, we move to new business. First is the consideration of academic policies and proposals from Dr. Carson. Thank you so much. Um, and, uh, before I do, I looked at each of your seats to student publications that were really pleased to share with you all. One is Border Town, it's a, a creative writing and writing publication of the Department of English and Philosophy. And the other is Blixt, it's a publication of the Department of Art. Students put this together to highlight some of the selected works from their peers, other students in the program. And uh, we are also today out here having a graphic design portfolio review, if, if that's something of interest in association with the research here. So I, I put these things out, I always forget to explain or invite you to, to uh, enjoy them, so I wanted to make sure I did that. On academic policies, I think that it's best if I um, subdivide these into three different areas. The first will start with traditional academic policies, and, and that is asking for your support of new certificates, new majors, new, new minors, as well as some other academic policies issues, specifically the inclusion of a new syllabus statement. That's an expanded Title IX statement, um, EEO Title IX statement. The certificates really hit me very, are very consistent with what we talked about this morning as a desired goal of the institution. And that is to find a mechanism to attract, attract post baccalaureates back to campus and be part of our lifelong learning identity. And the second really is to find ways to continue the, the promotion um, and emphasis on a liberal education in, in, in ways that demonstrate value and um, career readiness, but that really emphasize those basic competencies we talked about this morning, critical um, thinking, problem making, problem just problem solving and uh, oral communication. So these are the ones we have here. We will have um, several more coming and we hope that when they're all through HLC to put together a really nice brochure to support and promote these and we'll come and share that with you. But so we can get started, um, we would like your support for these four new certificates. The biochemistry and the chemistry degrees are merging together. It's something that um, was looked at in low completer review, but we would like to do that as well. And then again, we're very excited about the creation of the International Political Affairs degree, what we call the IPA, that is a combination of low completers and poli sci international studies and um, and also our new geography program. So those are not new to you guys have been hearing about those all along. The only other thing for this point of consideration is the Title IX statement on the syllabus template, which is included here and has been vetted through academic affairs, um, student services, and admissions. The second issue that I wanted to <laughs> to bring you up to date on is our Core 42. Of course, I can't get one single meeting without talking about Core 42. Um, but before we leave Title IX, I want to let you know that you recall we had a civil rights audit, OCR civil rights audit, 
that we were notified about several months ago and it occurred in April. And just this week we got our notification that we had a perfect audit. Um, no findings in any aspect and that the, that the audit is closed. So I don't think that's very typical to have no findings of, of any nature on an entire comprehensive civil rights audit. So I think the team that worked with me from all, all the different areas, I really appreciate appreciate that. And I think that was a good affirmation um, that, we're, that we're focused on the right things. Core 42 was the colorful page toward the back of your academic packets. And we are finally at the state that it is not permanent, but that is not going to um, evolve very much before our mandated implementation in the fall. Again, it has been a great team effort, and it's been a real privilege to work with the team here on, on moving this forward. It was an enormous, and I'm going to say almost impossible task that we were able to accomplish, and I think that all along the way, we really looked at state mandates and alteration of our core as an opportunity to strengthen our curriculum. Nick talked about in his report a couple of unique carve-outs that um, we had great campus cooperation, and I, I want to draw your attention to those. Again, we embrace the concept of for Core 42 as, as really facilitating student success, transfer student success, and we always wanted to be a part of that, but somehow we wanted to maintain as much as we possibly could our core mission and identity, um, for example, in the global area. So we took what the state gave us and we attempted to carve out or put additional restrictions for our native students on certain courses in those areas. One, also something we talked about before, um, earlier in the day this morning, is we carved out fine arts. We very much do believe that fine arts needs to have a place in the curriculum. And the way I was working with the state mandated Core 42 is that a student should graduate from a Missouri Public University, free or public university, and never take an art of any kind. Um, we did carve that out, and we are requiring that for our native students. And we are also expanding the nature of the courses beyond appreciation to include performance and studio courses as long as they're able to meet the, um, the liberal education critical thinking SLOs that the state requires. We also carved out our global piece. It's part of our mission. Um, there are all these strategy sessions we've talked about the importance of maintaining that mission and so we have retained that carve out, let me say, and that is in the far right hand column. And we are still asking our native students to take our health and wellness course, which again is unique. Other schools in the state do not have this. It's a course required of all of our native students and it really focuses on physical and mental health prevention and wellness. And we think it's really important based on um, our understanding of our students here that we really need that course in the curriculum. But I, uh, the second issue I would ask is for your support for core 42, um, so that we can move forward with that. And I will bring it back to you periodically as we make additional changes, working through it with the state. Third item I would ask for your deliberation on is the um, document included right behind, and that is our 2018-19 promotion and tenure recommendations. Last year we were not able to get these to you until the summer meeting, but um, we we're on time this year, and um, we would we would like your support for these prior, simply because we want to make sure the faculty and the faculty feel confident that um, that this is where we're going. We have a couple of more under deliberation that we'll be bringing to you, but um, we are very excited about these. This is the first the first year where we had people come under the new handbook criteria and. Um, with more stringent standards in all different areas of the of the job, which is the teaching and instruction, the research, as well as the service. And so we're very proud of this cohort of candidates who were successfully supported, um, again, by a pilot combined committee that Nick talked about as well. Um, so they are listed here. The recommendations of the promotion and tenure committee um, come to academic affairs, we add our recommendation um, and convey it to Alan who who's, um, shares it with you all for your support. You will see that there is um, one under promotion, there is one denial here and I wanted to clarify that that particular denial, uh, Dr. Mila Abuhani was denied because of an untimely petition, that there are um, when we switched to the 2015 handbook, there was some credit, credit for prior service. For many years, people were not hired into traditional tenure tracks. And so 
um, that the counting is getting all clarified and there was just a little bit in this county he didn't have enough years to, to, to ask to be considered for that promotion but it certainly wasn't performance no he met all the other performance criteria uh, he just has to be here one more year and then he can go up with the same record and he will be supported for that and he he's aware aware of that it, um, just a just the how we're counting things under the new handbook sort of way. So I ask for your deliberation on in consideration on those three. I'll be happy to address any questions that you have on any of them. Any questions for Dr. Carson? Sure about this last one under a promotion to associate professor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that went over real well. We ought to ask him to leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. I think he came to make sure we all stayed in line here. <laughs> you know, I'm on board. So his attendance was going to happen today, one way or the other. Yeah, why was Tim here today? And I thought it was because he had a picture in Brad's report. But. I'd like to take these up as two separate items. First of all, the uh, the academic policies. Is there a motion to approve the academic policies? So moved. Governor Gibson is her second. Second. Governor Kershaw, for the discussion. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 And oppose the same sign. Next item I'd like to take up is the promotion um, listing that we have here, and it would be a um, motion of uh, approval and affirmation. Um, and I would entertain that motion. So moved. Governor Franks. Second. Sir, second. Governor Flanagan, any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. And oppose the same sign. Congratulations to everybody, especially Thank you, you so Dr. Much. Nicoletti. Can we put an asterisk by that or something? I think I heard him vote yes. <laughs> I had my opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, next is consideration of uh, our NCAA compliance application. Thank you. Uh, this is, we need to read this every year into the record, so let me do that. This statement reaffirms that a critical component of the athletic department of Southern's mission is to incorporate the NCAA principles of sportsmanship and ethical conduct into the comprehensive mission of Missouri State University. <coughs> As a result, I fully endorse the task of MSSU Athletics Compliance Office, Office to coordinate, monitor, and verify rules, compli rules compliance with all NCAA, MIAA, and university requirements. A major component of the MSSU Athletics Compliance Office is to educate athletic department staff members, coaches, student athletes, friends of the program, and the institution as a whole on the NCAA rules, including NCAA amateurism, through a variety of means. As a member of the NCAA, Missouri Southern State University is committed to the principle of institutional control in a manner consistent with the rules and regulations of the NCAA and the for these faculty handbook modifications to get through. This is um, Dr. Nicoletti's last meeting. We're not gonna be able to. Um, we are, they're, they're just finally finalized and I need you guys to see the actual wording. So I'm gonna have to bring it back to you in June okay. for your okay. review. There is no um, controversy or concern between administration and the faculty on it. I just want you guys to be able to see it. Quite frankly, we just haven't had a chance to edit them yet Very into good. a coherent document. We'll look forward um, to that. But maybe yes. Nick will come visit in case you'll have any questions. Sure. Thank you. Those tenured faculty members move slow. Yeah, you're right. He's done. He's out. <laughs> Next is the discussion of um, possible bylaw changes. Do you want to take that? Yes. Sure. Um, I mentioned bylaws earlier, and there, there's one particular bylaw that we uh, need to uh, look into uh, this meeting, perhaps next, if you want to report it that way, um, regarding our meeting dates. Uh, the meeting dates are specified in the bylaws now that certain months and there's been consideration of change I know that um, we're thinking about going to five meetings a year quarterly and then one in the summer but to do that we need to change the bylaws first to allow it so uh, that would be a recommendation that we Very good. deal with that. And if it is to the board's liking what I would like to do is I would like to take this up at the June meeting being it is a bylaw change that way we have 
discussion of it and time to think about it, and then we'll bring it to a vote. And we'll also need to discuss when those meeting dates would be. And just as an idea, what we have bannered around is having a meeting in January, March, June, September, and November, once the bylaws are changed. And when we've talked about this before, we've also discussed, you know, the committees are probably going to play a bigger part than they have even in the past, uh, because more more action can be would be brought up through the committees. So, just something to consider. And if it is all right with the board, I'd like to bring that up at the June meeting and take a vote on it at that point in time. Mr. Chairman, you said January, March, June, September, November. And those are up for discussion. Those are just the ones that we had. Had discussed. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, Governor Haley asked me how this would impact our compensation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, 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 and I assure you, it, it will not change. Billy <laughs> 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 Preston once said, Nothing into nothing leaves. No. <laughs> he did say that. Is there a procedure you want us to follow if we had added for suggestions? Um, we can we can discuss it at the meeting okay. uh, next month if if we want to look at different dates or, or something okay. like that. All right. Um, are there any other items to come before the body? Hearing none, uh, the chair would have to a motion to adjourn the meeting. What about a June meeting date? Did we set that we up to our nine? We haven't haven't set it yet, and we'll do that within the next. Uh, or so we'll set a firm date, okay. and I probably should have already done that, but I haven't done it. I apologize. So, would there be a motion to adjourn? So moved. Governor Hayden. Is there a second? Second. Governor Franks. It was close there for a minute. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, say resign. Thank you for coming to me. Yeah. 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 Yeah.